Well, hello everyone and welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jeff Cranford one more time and we are discussing uh, spiritual due diligence, uh, that consideration of the things of Scripture, of the Bible, and of God and how they apply to our lives. And we are in uh, the second study, The Nature of Man. We're pushing past halfway through as we move to Lesson 5, which is what sin looks like. And Jeff, I think if we could come up with a definition for sin, boy, wouldn't that make it easy for people. I think so. Um, and a lot of times I think, uh, in culture at least, in discussion that we've had, maybe even in church, well, sin is this action or this thought or this kind of thing, and yet the Bible discusses uh, sin in one real broad brush, and that is things that... Uh, don't fit into a structure of faith, faithlessness. So connect those things for us. Faith, faithlessness, sin itself. Yeah, well in Romans chapter 14, Paul says that anything ultimately apart from faith is sin. So that necessitates then the discussion of what actually is faith. Faith actually is an ongoing relationship with God. Hmm. I mean, we don't think of it in that. We think of faith sure. as something I believe, and I believe about a God, but that's not the case. Uh, it says, uh, when it talks about Abraham, Abraham, you got to remember, Abraham's living 500 years in advance of the law. The law wasn't given until Moses. And so Abraham, listening to God, having relationship, and then acting, listening to God, faith in God, listening to that still small voice, and then acting. And it says because he acted on that, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So it was through Abraham's faith that he was, in a sense, deemed to be righteous or without sin. Uh, or and, and again, righteous, righteousness for us doesn't mean that we're completely without sin, but it's Christ's righteousness. So he was, in, in a sense, engaging with God. I think sometimes we think of God is being very arbitrary. We think of God, okay, he's thinking about the creation of the universe, and he's going to go out and he's going to say, now how can I make these this creation miserable? Uh, let's see, I'm going to come up with all these rules and regulations around which if they don't live under this guidelines, I'm going to strike them down. That was never the intent. In fact, the law was never the intent for God. The original relationships, Enoch, for instance, walked with God, and then God took him one day. But there was no law. So the original intent of the law was to keep things held together long enough to where Jesus could come down and then actually engage us with faith, and we could move back into relationship. The only thing that the law prescribes is, that, is our need for him, as we've been establishing through the last few studies. So as I think about faith, it's difficult for me to imagine that, uh, that anything apart from faith is sin, and yet that's exactly what the Bible says. So again, move from a position of thinking of sin as just being some wrong act against humanity to a position of not trusting God, not living in relationship with God, and out of that emanating murders and thefts and all those things are really indicative of us not having relationship. If we're tied in with God, we don't have a desire for sin. We don't, uh, it doesn't, it, it tends not to come up. It's not an issue. When we're separated from God, we're trying to fill that void, and that's typically what sin is. We murder because we don't get our way. We steal because we think it's going to satisfy our need. We lust because it, we think it's going to fill, as we talked about a little bit earlier, the empty self. And uh, it's so Sin is a byproduct of us pursuing a life without faith. And, and, and so as we try to fill those voids, we find ourselves in sin. So if we're walking in faith, we're being filled, we then don't have the propensity to sin. It's, right. it's kind of a paradox, but I think if you can think of it that way instead of just big grand sins and, oh, an arbitrary God doesn't want me to do that, well, I don't trust your God. I'm going to follow this God that has easier rules and regulations. It's really not about that. It's about the reason that we were created. And the reason we're created was not to follow rules and regulations. The reason we were created is to live in a faith relationship. I have faith that God has my best interest at heart. And because of that, boy, I live with vibrancy. I live connected to the source. Sounds like a New Age kind of a saying, but it really is the case. When I'm connected to the source, 
sin becomes less and less and less of an issue. And I find that in my own life. I am not yet without sin, but I am not perfectly walking in faith yet. As I increase my walk in faith, sin tends to diminish. And so I think we find uh, the full... We've come back to where we started. Anything apart from faith is sin. A life perfectly lived in faith is a life that tends towards righteousness. A life lived apart from faith, regardless of your religious affiliation, a life lived apart from faith tends to gravitate towards the base nature of man, looking to fulfill the self-life, the empty self. Sounds to me like we're in trouble when we dismiss God from our mind. Well, it, there's no question. And trying to live an ethical life outside of the parameters of uh, an understanding of who God is is uh, really, to me, an exercise in futility. Because if I don't posit God, and I'm just trying to lead a righteous life, the question is, why? I'm gone in a few years. Why not eat, drink, and be merry, for sure. tomorrow we die? I really don't understand that. Right, right. Sounds almost like a, you know, in a, in a good marital relationship, we would say it's good because when, pe- when the husband or the wife, both, hopefully, when they make individual choices, they're doing it with the other in mind. Correct. And so they would not make an individual choice without the other in mind. And where we run into sin is when we continue to make individual choices without God in mind. That's right. And uh, then that's that's the root of sin, and it leads to sins. Absolutely. Sure. Well, friends, as you look at Lesson 5 and what sin looks like, you'll see exactly what the Bible has to say about faith, faithlessness, and sin itself, and how those are interwoven. Uh, as we live before God.